As a child, I read the writings of Bunyan while the master lay asleep in the room next door. I soon after received a small pocket Bible, and the words of the Lord became a constant companion. At the age of 15, I had the pleasure of hearing the Reverend Whitfield preach. Such eloquence before I had never heard. His words fell from his lips with majesty and power. From that moment on, I knew I had an inexplicable calling to express to others the word of God. people of Wainsgate were the poorest folk of them all. You could say they were a rather tame bunch. Love and companionship were a part of their daily religion. And purity and propriety their daily devotion. the established church never dared to touch them. All they had was a small, run-down Baptist church. When my wife and I arrived to minister in 1765, that church was the only real hope of ever bringing these people together. As I arrived, questions began to arise. Could a simple man perform such a mighty task? Well, yes, this is very interesting, Dr. Fawcett. But what does it have to do with my reason for coming here? Oh, I assure you, it has everything to do with it. Do you like poetry, Mr. Opal? Yes, I, I suppose I do. Do you read much of it? Very little, actually. Well, have you ever sung a hymn? <sighs> of course. Then you have read poetry. And let me ask you this. Do you know why a poet writes I've never really thought about it. To express himself, my friend. To express his soul. Praise to thee, thou great creator. Praise be thine from every tongue. Join my soul with every creature. Join the universal song. I wrote that. When did I write that? Oh, never mind. Where was I? Ah, my friend. When I first began to preach, even for the mere wage of 20 pounds a year, I did it as a sense of duty. As a poet must express his own soul. So I had to express the very soul of God. That I should gain an interest in the Savior's God. Died he for me, who caused his pain for me, who came to death pursue. Amen. Oh. 
everyone. Good morning. I'm glad all of you could make it here on this glorious day. I'm glad to be a part of this congregation and I'm looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you. Our scripture reading for today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 2 well, come back where you come from, preacher. through 5. This particular text is extremely important to me since I'm new to the congregation. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellence. Satan's come in! Satan's come in to get you all! Mark my word! Of speech, or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined. <laughs> Well, the first attempts were not quite so successful, but... He died before me, oh, you should have seen it in those days. He was there. God was there. I baptize you in the name of the Father. I could feel his presence. His power was before me. Henry, look at you. <laughs> he had blessed my labors greatly. Greater than I had ever I imagined. No For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. A few were not so easy to reach, but God was working. He was working. Let's pray, David. Lord, we ask that you will watch over Sarah as we know you will. Seven years, we stayed on, living off of potatoes and porridge, watching God work in each and every one of their lives, until... Jonathan, shut that door for me. Is there any way you can get him to keep quiet for a minute? He's hungry, John. Well, give him something. Give him what? Do with some more covers, too. They say the pox has been getting worse this year. It's only a fever, John. There comes a time when one begins to doubt his purpose, and even his usefulness. These things weighed heavily upon me, and unfortunately began to control me. O oh Lord, to thee I lift mine eye. 
attend unto my humble cry. Let thy kind hand some gift bestow and make me useful here below. Could they not give you a raise? Hmm? Could they not give you a raise? <laughs> yes, they did. They did. Another five pounds. Uh, unfortunately, they could not afford to pay me in money. Good heavens, what did they pay you in? Christ alone for salvation, Christ alone for salvation. So they are completely untrue, Lord Popper. I apologize to the idiot Woods. I apologize to this woman. I am completely mistaken. What is this pig she spends his night with? Get thee behind me, Satan. What? Get him. Come on, David. Get him. 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 Get break our church apart, wants to tear it down. Satan's what it is. Satan! Is that what this is all about, whether or not to build a new church? I'm looking after my family. I have to take care of them, which is more than I could say for This him. church has been ours since the beginning, and we're not church. changing it now. Now, gentlemen, gentlemen, please, let's, let's go inside and fellowship together. We can work this out peacefully later. No, we don't. We're settling this here now. Either we're building a new church, or the lot of us are not coming back. David, we can't afford to be irrational. Nothing against you, Reverend. Some of us have to travel miles to get here. And it don't do your family's health much good if they got to breathe in this musty old place. Some of us are a bit too stuck up in our old ways, aren't we? Eldon? I'm sorry, Reverend but I've got my family to think of. How did these things happen? Over a building, James. It is completely foolish. Well, perhaps you should take a stand. Make the decision for them. Either way I go, I lose half the congregation. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Bostwick? <laughs> Besides, it, it is not my place. It is their decision. Really, John, you are their guidance. They look up to you. In the history of the church, the clergy has always taken a stand on major issues. Take Dr. Kill. <laughs> to be brief, my dear friend, you may say what you will, but I'll ne'er be confined to read nothing, nothing but Gill. <laughs> You've always been a great poet, John. He's taken quite ill, you know. Hmm? Dr. Gill. 
I was not aware of it. They're searching for his replacement in the event he should pass away. Well, we should hardly be concerned with that now. We should be far more concerned with Dr. Gill's health. John, they want you. They want you to replace him in the event it's necessary. The elders are quite pleased with your work and wish for you to come over and speak with them for a few weeks. I do not think that I could... John, be... you know it's a much higher wage and a much greater church, and it's what you've always wanted for you and your family. I'll pray on Great, great. It's a wonderful opportunity for you. They've asked me to give you this and to tell you that there's much more where that came from when you come to London. You know, Reverend Hartley spoke to me this afternoon about the Reverend Dr. Gill. It appears that he's in poor health these days, and they're looking to me as a replacement. I, I told him I would pray on it, but I think it is highly unlikely that I should take it. It is for the best. Susanna. Stupid thread. Susanna. There will be other opportunities. Don't be fooling yourself, John. You know we'll never leave. The timing just isn't right now. When, John? When? Until there's no more food left. Until another child is sick. Until one is dead. And... Until I can at least patch things up here. Until I have at least in some way reached everyone in this area. They're, they're like family, Susanna. Family? What about all of them? will provide. You know that, right? God. Now let's try and get some sleep. I cannot help but think that things worsen still. And I fear that these take an even greater toll on my life's partner. Yet I know not how to comfort her when I knoweth not my own. We mustn't lose hope. I know things are difficult for you now. The crop is low. There have been many illnesses. But God will provide for us. He is here for us. I make my complaint to the Lord daily, but he seems to cover himself with a cloud that prayer cannot pass through. I am ready to say with Job, 
when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. What is it, would you say, that makes a poem beautiful? Um, as you said, it, it's an expression of the one who wrote it. Correct. If a poem hence failed to express its creator, would it not thence fail to be beautiful? John. And so, you see, I felt there was no alternative but to go to London. I am a poet, deprived of my art, deprived of my ability to function, to express my creation. London before, you know. I saw the glories and the promises there. I saw the gold-plated artistry and the opulent figurines, the ornate windows depicting the faces of patriarchs and saints, the museum where are 10,000 beauties of nature and art. I heard the gospel preached by many a great and admired man, Dr. Condor, Reverend Mr. Foster. And I preached myself before thousands, thousands who thirsted for the gospel. My departure was not without its opposition, however. The people of the village tried to talk me out of it, However, I must say their attempts were rather unsuccessful.
Reverend. Peter, come in. I, I, I thought you'd want to know. I threw out my last bottle of gin the other night. Well, good for you. Well, it, it wasn't easy, but I did it. Oh, well, good. John, you think you might consider staying? I want to, Peter. But I can't. Oh, but you can, Reverend. You've always taught us God will provide. All things are possible with God. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Yes, Peter, but there will be another. God will provide, just as he has for me. It, it is God's will that I go. Is it? And have you talked to him of late? I've got my family to think of, Peter. Yes. Yes, I... I suppose you do. Well, I... I'll be on my way, then. Yes, there we are. All right, oh, yes, would you be so kind as to put that in front? And so, the day finally arrived. Being we only had a small cart to travel in, we sold most of our belongings and packed what little we had left. So, he be running out, eh? No, I, I'm not running out. Uh, actually... I... No. He be running out. That's what they all done. There be others for ye, you know. I worked mighty hard putting up the walls of this church for the first one left. Thought you might be something different. D different? Why? Just take a look at the cart. They got a thing for you. Thought it might be the preaching. I, I never preached. I merely attempted to preach. Well, I thought it might have been something special you were saying. <laughs> Things have changed a lot around here. Folks don't gather around much these days, lest there be something special. There will be another. Perhaps you could visit. Nah. You all be the same. Here we are, Rodney. Have you got that? Susanna, it's time. Goodbye. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you. Children. Here we are, ladies first.
was at that moment I realized. Realized what? A most beautiful poem. Uh, don't you see, my friend? It was right there before me. It had been speaking to me all along. The perfect poem made in the image of God. Because of Christ's glorious work, there they stood, all of them perfect and beautiful expressions of our Creator. Each one contributing a different verse, all tied to a central theme of love. John, I can't bear it. I know not how to leave. Neither do I, Susanna. What are you waiting for? Put everything back. Untie these lines and back. I had returned, my spirits were renewed, and I could see God once again before me. There was still hope. That day I shared with them the text from Luke chapter 12, verse 15. A man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. At first I shared a poem, one that God had been writing through me all along. The tie that binds. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. We share our mutual our woes, mutual our mutual burdens bear, and, all and often for each other flows the sympathizing When we asunder part, it gives us mutual pain. But we shall all be joined in heart and hope to meet again. 
like that. Someone wrote the tune to that a short while ago. Did a good job, too, I should say. Reverend, I... His Majesty is prepared to offer you a great deal. Any benefit you can confer upon, he would be most honored to have you as part of his church. And I would be most honored. I've been among my people for 50 years now. I never left. I almost made a mistake once. I have lived among my people, enjoying their love. And I shall die among my people. I need nothing even a king can offer. May God bless you and his majesty abundantly. May he give the king all the authority and wisdom to rule with great success. And may he bless all the days of your life. Now, you have a long journey. I trust you'll stay the night. Breakfast is early. I hope you like potatoes. Let's see how